So we are going to talk about weed seed longevity. Weed seed longevity is the length of time weed seeds remain viable in the soil. I'm going to use a reference by Switzer 1986 to give you examples of uh, the weed seed longevity of various uh, weed species uh, found in uh, Zimbabwe. Table one is showing weed seed longevity of some common weeds in Zimbabwe. Now, there was an experiment which involved uh, storing weed seeds under cropped in the fallow uh, conditions. The seeds were put in uh, nylon bags and buried at various uh, depths. These were withdrawn uh, after every month and the seed germination determined to check whether the seeds were still uh, viable. Now, it was found that uh, with the Biden's pylosa, uh, viability of the seeds lasted uh, for four years under cropped conditions and three years under fallow. Just looking across the weed species, probably the maximum weed seed longevity occurred at 12 years. For example, Erosin Indica uh, was viable uh, for 12 years. After 12 years, uh, the seeds were dead. So in Zimbabwe, we have got uh, most weed seeds with the longevity, uh, which ranges between three and probably 12 years. However, Komerina Bengarensi seeds they lasted for over 12 years under fallow. There was also an experiment which looked at the weed seed longevity and the impact of uh, tillage on weed seedling uh, emergence. So the treatments which were examined were zero cultivation, which is more or less uh, conservation agriculture, annual cultivation uh, representing conventional tillage, quarterly cultivation representing again uh, conventional tillage, and an extreme treatment which looked at monthly cultivation. Now with the Rodborea cocaine kindensis, it was found that uh, it only lasted for four years, from 1966 to 1970. After 1970, it was exhausted. And annual cultivation appeared to reduce it compared to the other systems. Uh, with Acanthospema mispidum, it lasted for eight years, and the impact of tillage uh, was not very uh, effective. I mean, it was not very significant across uh, various treatments. Now, with the Lucine Indica, 
it lasted for 12 years, but uh, zero tillage had a serious impact uh, on the Eleusine Indica. It reduced it compared to uh, conventional tillage. The Turas Ramonium, which also lasted for 12 years, it wasn't affected by tillage treatments. Like Kandra Faisaloids <coughs> lasted for 17 years. Uh, conservation agriculture reduced it and it appeared to be stimulated by uh, cultivation. It must be noted that uh, Elucine Indica and Nicandra Faisaloids have got uh, small seeds and they more or less behave the similarly. And also Rodborea cocaine kinensis, Acanthosperma mispidum and Datura stramonia, which appear to have large seeds, were more or less not influenced by the tillage systems. Now, there were also other experiments which looked at the effect of tillage on weed seedling emergence on large plots. Uh, reduced the tillage versus conventional tillage. It appeared that reduced the tillage supported a high number of wheat seedlings compared to conventional tillage in most of the experiments. But uh, there were also some experiments, two of them, the one done by Mandumbu and Mashinga, where the effects were not different from were not different. Uh, reduced the tillage versus conventional uh, tillage. Now we want to look at the weed seedling emergence and the establishment. When the domains ends, the germination process starts. The root and the shoot will start to grow. There's photosynthesis and the, the plant becomes uh, uh, independent from the seed. We've got uh, epigerogemination, which is common. This is protrusion of the cotyledons above the soil surface. In fact, most weed seeds are weed seedlings of uh, epigermination. Upon emergence, cotyledons become uh, photosynthetic and support the, the plant. This is the emergence of Biden's pylosa with elongated uh, cotyledons. And this is hypomia plebia showing a V-shaped uh, cotyledons We have a hibiscus musei with a almost round cotyledons. Now, conditions for germination in the survival are found on what is known as a safe sites uh, in the fields. Safe sites provide the stimuli to break dormancy and initiate uh, germination. Water and oxygen are consumed in the course of germination. Weeds follow a characteristic germination and the emergence pattern depending on the species. For example, Ricardia scabra, Erosini indica, and Comerina benganensis can emerge throughout uh, the season. There's a study which was done at uh, Henderson Research Station as well as 
Makuwori Research Station. This experiment looked at the periodicity of weed seedling emergence and the frequency of weeding in maize uh, and the sorghum. So this is the paper. Now what was found was that uh, between around two weeks, most of the weed seedling I mean, the weed seedling emergence was very high and it decreased with the time. And it actually varies across uh, species with the Ricardia scabra emerging throughout the season and some weed species terminating their emergence uh, much earlier. So these are the trends of weed seedling emergence, sometimes you get a sudden boost in the emergence. So these are the emergence patterns. These probably have got, you know, within six weeks to eight weeks, but within six weeks, uh, emergence had actually terminated. This one is uh, Ricardia scabra with, with a lot of uh, germination between two and eight weeks and it continued to germinate uh, throughout uh, the season. Now I want to focus on the growth and the resource capture of uh, weeds. So we want to look at the success of weeds. So let us talk about these traits. Rapid establishment, rapid canopy development, rapid uh, root growth, so these three traits uh, will affect growth rate and the growth rate uh, reflect competitive ability of uh, weeds. Annual plants have high growth, high relative growth rates are GR. For example, Kenopodia marbam, it is an RGR of 2.12 grams per gram per week, which possess a high maximum potential RGR. Plant size and leaf area are best predictors of competitiveness in, in a mixture of uh, in mixtures of weeds. Now we want to talk about the photosynthetic pathways. Plants can be divided into three major groups, C3, Calvin cycle, C4, or C4, dicarboxylic acid, CAM, crassulacin acid metabolism plants. C4 pathway is highly represented in agricultural weeds. C4 plants have higher rates of net photosynthesis than C3 plants. PEP or phosphoenal pyruvate carboxylase is higher affinity for carbon dioxide than RUBP ribulose biphosphate carboxylase. The initial carbon dioxide fixing enzyme of C3 uh, photosynthesis. 
in the C4 plant, photosynthesis can be maintained even when stomata are nearly closed or when CO2 is low. High rates of photosynthesis are correlated with rapid growth and rapid growth is a trait of high competitive ability. Many highly competitive weeds are C4 plants. For example, Amaranthus uh, retroflexus C4 wheat. However, we have got the Canopodem album, which is a C3 wheat. Above 25 degrees Celsius, Amaranthus retroflexus had higher photosynthetic rates, and below 25 degrees Celsius, Canopodium album had higher photosynthetic rates. Another trait to look at is the water uptake. Many weeds have rapid root elongation and extensive root system. Root system development is an indication of competitive ability. Water use efficient is the amount of carbon dioxide fixed or dry matter produced per unit of water lost in transpiration. The highest water use efficient efficiency is found in the C4 plants. C4 plants are more productive than C3 plants when water is limiting. High water use efficiency may not always be may not always be essential for, uh, for competition. Now let us look at the plasticity in environmental responses. Agricultural environment is disturbed environment. Uh, changes can occur unpredictably with tolerate variable conditions. They grow and produce successfully in these disturbed environments. So tolerance to environmental variation is referred to as plasticity. Now mimicry is another characteristic of weeds. Uh, this is the similarity of one organism to another resemblance of two or more organisms. They are weeds which look like crops during certain stages of uh, growth. These are examples, chamber grass, Rotboria coquinkinensis, may look like maize, wild oat, avina fatua, it may look like wheat, rapoco grass, elucini indica, it may look like a finger millet. Stock rose, hibiscus musei, may look like a cotton. Banyard grass, echinocroa grass gari, uh, may look like rice. This then is chamber grass. At a mature stage, this is the seedling stage, uh, which may appear like a maize. This is Avena Fachua, showing two stages. This is very similar to wheat. And this is Hibiscus musei stock rose. Uh, it looks like uh, cotton, especially uh, when it is uh, small. So this is it for now. I will stop here.